Okay, and then we are done. This right here is our solution. This is one of many, 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 Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be freaking sweet, my boys. We are going to derive the Riemann zeta function and one of its many integral representations today using the identity I have derived in last video. Remember this thing right here, this huge expression, and when we let p be equal to zero, then well, we are going to get zeta of two for now. Our goal is to find out zeta of s today using the Leibniz roof integration, also known as Feynman integration, just for the lols and the clickbait, because people admire Feynman so much, I don't know why. Do I still have Feynman like just right here? Um, yeah, Daddy Feynman right here, my boys, whoop! Fucking shitty book. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do, we're going to differentiate this integral i repeatedly with respect to this parameter p right here. I want you guys to notice that we can express x times t to the p power as nothing but, okay, I'm going to put it here, x times t to the p power is nothing but e to the ln of this chunk, but we can bring the exponent to the outside. So this is e to the p times natural log of x times t, okay? P is our parameter of choice today that we are going to differentiate with respect to. Let us do the very first iteration and see what we get. Also, we can turn this just um, for the people who are not too good when it comes to differentiation. P plus n squared, one over P plus n squared is nothing but P plus n to the negative two power. Okay, so let us move on. So I prime of P is nothing but, okay? Up and lower bounds are independent of P, meaning we have to use the special case of the Leibniz rule for integration. Without further restrictions, we are just going to bring this limit to the inside and differentiate this chunk partially with respect to P. I'm going to write it out just for you, just now. So we are, that's just a constant, one over X. Uh, 1 over 1 minus x times t, but we are going to partially differentiate with respect to p this chunk right here, which is nothing but this. e to the p times natural log of x times t, integrate with respect to x and then with respect to t. Differentiating the exponential function is bloody easy. Integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 1 of, okay? Just dragging this natural log down, natural log to the first power x times t, and then we are going to get this exponential function being preserved, p times natural log of x times t over one minus x times t with respect to x and then integrate it with respect to t. Also, we have another side of this metal, namely this right here. Once again, it's a matter of interchanging limits right here. Without further restric restrictions, let us interchange the differential with respect to p and this infinite summation, this series right here. <laughs> differentiating this rational function is quite easy. Track negative two to the front and reduce this power by one. Take the inner derivative with respect to p, which is nothing but one. Chen Lu, easily done. Okay, we are going to get, I'm going to put it like this, negative one to the first power times two, but two is nothing but one times two. Okay, I'm, I'm going to put it like this, times an infinite sum, running from n equals to one to infinity, of, well, I'm going to put it like this, p plus n to the negative third power. Okay, I've written this out pretty carefully. Let's do one more iteration and see if we can see a certain pattern. Yeah, we are going to see one, definitely. So, I double prime with respect to t. It's nothing but once again, special case, Leibniz roof integration. Now we are going to get integral zero to one, integral zero to one of natural log squared of x times t. I just love this notation, natural log squared. This, this is so nice, just like with the sign. So many people are confused when I put the squared at that place when the sign is here, for example. Never mind. So e to the p times natural log x times t over 1 minus x times t. Integrate with respect to x, integrate it with respect to t. Being nothing but dragging the negative sign to the front, negative 3 actually. This is negative 1 squared. I know this is just 1. 
but I'm going to put it like this times 1 times 2 times 3. If you didn't notice already this right here is 2 factorial, this right here is 3 factorial times the sum running from n equals to 1 to infinity p plus n to the negative fourth power. And now we can actually already see a pattern. So nothing is really going to change over time. So this pattern is going to hold. What is the pattern exactly? If we differentiate repeatedly up until the kth derivative, for example, of this integral i, we are going to get integral from 0 to 1, integral from 0 to 1 of natural log. OK, we had a second derivative natural log squared. First derivative, natural log to the first power, meaning we are going to end up with natural log to the kth power of x times t. This term is being preserved all the time and this expression was equal to x times t to the pth power. So x times t to the pth power over 1 minus x times t integrated with respect to x integrated with respect to t. One side done. Now we have negative 1 to the, okay, same exponent as our natural log, so to the kth power. Then we are going to get, okay, here we had a 2, now we had 3 factorial, here we had a 1, now we are going to have 2 factorial, meaning this exponent of natural log plus 1 all the time, so k plus 1 in this case. k plus 1 factorial sum running from n equals to 1 to infinity of p plus n to the, okay, we had a 4 here when we had a 2 here. We had a 3 here when we had a 1 here. So k plus 2 actually. And this is 1 over p plus n to the k plus 2 power, okay? <laughs> and that's really cool. We have found this representation. What we can do, we can make a little change of index to bring it into this notation you are going to find on Wikipedia, for example, or in most books. Let um, k plus 2 be equal to s. Okay, if we plug this into here, I'm going to leave this integral out of the way. We don't care about this anymore. We are only caring about this expression. Integral from 0 to 1 of integral from 0 to 1 of natural log of, okay, just subtract 2 on both sides. This is going to give us the natural log to the s minus 2 power x times t, x times t to the p power over 1 minus x times t integrated with respect to x, integrated with respect to t, being equal to negative 1 to the, okay, same exponent as here, s minus 2. Negative 1 squared is nothing but 1. So actually, we can simplify this to negative 1 to the s power in this case. k plus 1 right here meaning if we subtract 1 on both sides this gives us s minus 1 factorial and then we have the sum running from n equals to 0 that's just side note to infinity of p 1 over p plus n to the s power. Okay now we have found this crazy expression out. One thing you might want to change, just, just to make it even uh, look even cooler, s minus 1 factorial is actually nothing but gamma function of s. I have derived the gamma function basically with the same tools before. Take a look at this video, it's pretty quite cool. So s minus 1 factorial is nothing but gamma of s. Now we are going to do the same trick as before. We are going to let the limit of p approach 0. We're going to get the kth derivative of i of p being equal to 0, x times t to the 0 of power is just 1. Also, p is equal to 0 right here. Meaning, on this occasion, we are going to get an integral running from 0 to 1 of an integral running from 0 to 1, natural log s minus 2 of power of x times t over 1 minus x times t integrated with respect to x, integrated with respect to t. It's nothing but negative 1 to the s power gamma of s of an infinite sum running from n equals to 1, in this case not 0, I'm terribly sorry, 1, to infinity of 1 over n to the s power. And like I have proposed in the last video, this right here is, I still don't know how to write this thing properly, zeta of s. Meaning we can 
solve for zeta of s, respectively, meaning we are going to end up with zeta of s being nothing but. Okay, we can divide both sides by this chunk right here, but see it negative one to the negative s power is the same as negative one to the s power. So let's bring it to the top over gamma of s times this double integral. Okay, and then we are done. This right here is our solution. This is one of many, 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 many integral representations of the Riemann zeta function. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and recommend the channel if you like. This is always such a cool method to differentiate integrals repeatedly to get some pretty fucking nice integral representations of things. Yeah, um, what else can I say? Riemann zeta function, pretty fucking important Riemann hypothesis. Um, you need this chunk in your life. Maybe I'm going to do more about this, maybe some analytical number theory, if I get a chance to do so. I'm definitely going to do more integrals in the next time because people love integrals. You know how you can support the channel by those infinity boys I created or support the channel on Patreon. Visit my website, visit my second channel. I have a second channel now. And yeah, up until next video, have a flammable day, my boys. See ya.